Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth round of Writing Wikipedia Articles, The Basics and Beyond. This is a course about Wikipedia and open educational resources that we've run three times in the past, uh, all in 2013. And we are just getting underway on the fourth round, which will be a six-week course starting today, uh, the 25th of February, for those of us in the Americas, or the 26th of February for those in Asia and Australia. Um, and we really look forward to getting to know everyone and showing you uh, on a practical level how to edit Wikipedia, helping, helping you explore the idea of why that might be a useful thing to be able to do and applying those skills to content that interests you. We will also be especially exploring uh, Wikipedia articles relating to open education and open educational resources and putting a strong focus on those. So even as we're all learning as individuals, uh, we will also be accomplishing something as a group in, uh, in improving a topic area on Wikipedia. So by the time we get to the end of our six weeks, uh, we will have improved a number of different Wikipedia articles, and uh, hopefully that will be something that we can uh, feel proud of and also carry forward if, uh, if you're inspired to continue working on Wikipedia after this course. So uh, I'm very pleased that you're all here. Uh, at last count, I believe we had something like 170 people enrolled in the course, which is very exciting. Uh, it, it has been uh, our experience in the past that sometimes people sign up because it's very easy to do so and never show up. So it's always, uh, it's always very uh, gratifying to us to see people actually showing up for the first session and, uh, and chatting in the chat window and bringing questions and ideas. So we will be, as, as you'll see uh, in this session today, we, we like to be very interactive. Um, the, the general structure uh, of these class sessions is going to be, uh, we're gonna have, the first hour is generally going to be uh, a presentation. There'll be some Q&A, uh, questions and answers within that presentation. And there will be some activities within that presentation. So you might have like a five minute uh, period to try out something that we've introduced in the class. Uh, and then we'll take, a, uh, we'll take a short break. And the remainder of the class time, uh, the remaining hour and a half, will be available for you to get started on your homework. Uh, the instructors, we, we expect everyone uh, to stay logged in. Um, and, uh, and if you have questions, uh, you should bring them up in the session, and we'll hopefully be able to answer them in a way that is useful to other people in the class as well. Um, but that generally, that hour and a half will be a period for you to, uh, to get some work done on your own. So uh, I have posted uh, an outline for the first hour on the Writing Wikipedia Articles Week 1 page. Uh, I'm going to just put a link to that in the, uh, in the chat window in case anyone uh, does not have that open yet. Oops, that's, let's see, I didn't paste that in the right place. Uh, so you might want to pull that up, and that's going to give you a general uh, sense of where we are in this first hour. And uh, if you'll get lost, that should help you figure out where we are. Um, and so let's just get right to it. I'm going to, uh, I'd, I'd like to start off by introducing myself and my two co-instructors. Uh, I'm Pete Forsythe. I've been a Wikipedia contributor since 2006. Uh, I started off purely as a volunteer out of personal interest, working mainly on articles relating to the U.S. state of Oregon, which is where I lived, but I did not grow up there, so I was very interested in uh, getting to know more about the history of the state and uh, how the government worked and the cultural history, various things like that. Uh, and I found that Wikipedia was a great way not just to explore reading what was already there, but as I was learning things, I could, uh, I could build Wikipedia articles little bit by little bit. And I was very inspired when I found that other people would come along and improve the articles that I'd started or that I'd worked on. It was like my own work was getting better without me even having to do anything. So it, it became kind of addictive, and it has become a central 
part of my work. Uh, so I, I do a lot of work with various kinds of organizations, including universities uh, and nonprofit organizations and corporations to uh, help them figure out how to engage with Wikipedia in ways that are useful and ethical and uh, upfront. That's with on the corporate side, that's one of the big concerns is how to be clear about uh, any connection or conflict of interest that you might have. Uh, and also working with universities to help students learn from something from the, the possibility of editing or the opportunity to edit Wikipedia uh, or nonprofit organizations to improve a general topic area. So that's that's my background and uh, I'd like to give Sarah and Bob a few minutes to introduce themselves. Sarah, you want to take it away? Uh, we can't hear you. You may need to click the talk button. Wow, you would think I would remember that. It has been a while. <laughs> Can everyone hear me okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Um, hi, thank you, Peter. And uh, welcome, everybody, to the fourth iteration of our class. Um, I am Sarah Frank Bristow, and I come to the class as a casual Wikipedian, a longtime editor, but mostly of stuff like incorrect grammar and various um, typos that simply bothered me. That was what started me editing. And then I realized if I set up an account, I could keep track of them. Very glad I did that back in the day. Um, my The core of my work is actually in online education research. So this class brings together a number of different topics for me. I've done a lot of work in the area of open educational resources in the last few years. Um, Pete and I are both colleagues and former friends. We go back to our university days. We're not in the same location. Uh, he's in San Francisco. I'm in Chicago. But um, we still, still do a lot of great work together. So um, yeah, looking forward to getting to know you all over the next six weeks. And assuming our colleague Bob Cummings is here, I will turn the mic over to him. Great. Can you hear me all right? Yep, you sound great. Great. So, hey, everybody. I'm Bob Cummings. Um, I'm uh, in the uh, University of Mississippi as an associate professor of uh, composition and rhetoric. And thanks for welcoming me to the class. Um, I started teaching writing with Wikipedia um, a while ago, probably first time in 2005 and have been at it off and on uh, ever since. And I'm really excited to be part of the class this time around. I've partnered with Pete and Sarah before, and so I've uh, participated in previous versions of the class, um, and I'm excited to be here again. Um, originally, we had hoped that we would be uh, bringing students from enrolled classes at the University of Mississippi to this class, but it didn't work out for this iteration. But I'm very interested on uh, the concept of bringing uh, free and open online classes and, and blending them with um, four credit courses within the university system. Uh, right now, I am joining you from Sydney, Australia, where it is Wednesday, a little after uh, noon. And um, if anyone wants to know how the rest of Tuesday turns out, just ask me and I'll be glad to let you know. Um, so I'll turn it back over to Pete. Thanks, Pete. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, so I think just a, a brief logistical note so you all know what to expect. Uh, generally, I will be the one uh, conducting these sessions and doing most of the talking, uh, but Sarah and Bob will typically be here for our class sessions. In general, Sarah will be working uh, in the in the chat window and with our online tools, which you're, you're going to see some of them. I'm going to introduce in a little more detail momentarily. And if you find that you have questions uh, while we're going along, generally your your best first approach will be to leave a comment in the chat window. Just type something into the chat window. Sarah will typically be following that more closely than me because I'll be busy talking. Um, so she might be able to answer your question right there, or one of your fellow students might be able to. 
uh, or if it's something that needs to that I need to address, uh, she'll nudge me and and we'll make sure that I get to it uh, in the class session. And uh, Bob, I think has, so. Sarah and I have taught the course in in close collaboration in the past, and this is the the first time that Bob is joining us as an instructor. So. Uh, we anticipate that his role will be a little bit experimental as we go along. Uh, Bob has a, a strong background in formal education, which Sarah and I don't, uh, and uh, particularly in open education. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that we'll be hearing more from him, but it's a little tough to guess exactly what the format of that will be so far. Um, so I also, we have a few past students with us. And I would just like to give a special welcome to some familiar faces. Uh, I'm, I know that I saw Cami earlier, and uh, I believe Jade is here as well. I'm just taking a look through the, the list of who's on the call. Um, so it's oh uh, Jeanette as well. So very very special welcome to you guys. Uh, it's not only it's 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 very gratifying to us that you would want to come back and deepen your learning about Wikipedia, and I also think it's going to be a really great uh, resource for our new students uh, to have more experienced students in the class. Uh, as, as we're going to see, Wikipedia and open education are both very complex topics, and there are so many different directions to go within each, each one of them uh, that there really is no one path that will follow. There's no, there's no, there's no definable set of things that you need to learn that you're then done with. So we've found it really works well to have people at various stages in their learning uh, to, to work alongside each other. And we often get lots of interesting discussions that way. Uh, so if, if any of you would like to grab the microphone for a moment and, and say hello, uh, please do. Uh, and if uh, I, I actually, uh, if you want to ponder that for a moment, just uh, why don't you let Sarah know in the chat window. And in the meantime, I would just like to uh, give some special thanks to our sponsors. The, uh, this, this project in general that led to the creation of this course comes from a grant from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, which has uh, an extensive program area in open education and open educational resources. So the, the goal of that project has been specifically to improve articles on that topic on Wikipedia, and that was our original inspiration to run the course. And that, that grant, that project is something that is run through the University of Mississippi. So uh, that's why Bob is here with us. Uh, so the university has been a, a in, instrumental institution in getting all of this going. And we're very pleased, especially in this round, for the first time uh, to have the university uh, playing a more active role in actually running the course with Bob. Uh, joining us as a co-instructor. Uh, and finally, the School of Open is, uh, is, a, an online, uh, is, a, is an online institution for people to develop and offer free courses. And the School of Open is, is our original inspiration for running this as a free and open course for anyone to join in. And we've had a, a great deal of support from Um, other instructors and people with a, a background running these kinds of course, uh, these kinds of courses in the past and concurrently with us. So uh, our deepest appreciation towards the School of Open, and we strongly encourage you, if you're interested in taking online courses, to explore the other offerings there as well. And I think that will come up more as the as the course goes along. So uh, if you want to look now, though, you can always go to schoolofopen.org and browse the courses available there. Uh, does anyone want to say hello uh, before I move on uh, of our past students? Okay, well, I'm, I'm sure we'll be hearing more from them as we get into the course. So next, I want to give, uh, I want to just spend a few minutes talking about how this course will work. Uh, if you've been reading the pages on Wikipedia and the emails that we've been sending out, uh, some of this may be, uh, you, you may already know it, um, but it, it's always helpful to review this type of thing. So let's just 
take a look at a few uh, things that will help you take the course. Uh, I want to especially acknowledge our students taking the course in self-paced mode. So even though uh, not everyone in the course is here in this live session, for some people that's because they can't take it at this, this time of day, either because they're in Europe or Africa where it's the middle of the night, uh, or just because they have a schedule conflict. That's perfectly fine. We have, uh, we will be archiving all of our class sessions uh, as videos. Um, and so if you, if you look at our course pages, you'll find instructions on how to take the course in self-paced mode. I'm going to show you uh, in a little more detail in a moment. Uh, but it's, it, there's, there's no problem with, with, uh, with taking it in that mode. Uh, you should get just as much out of the course. You just might need to put a little bit of extra effort into, uh, in, into making sure that you keep up and, um, and speak up if you have questions. So, and, and also, if you ever need to miss a class session, it's no problem at all. Just watch the video. Uh, the videos will typically be posted uh, within 48 hours after the session, so Thursday or Friday of each week. So just log in and, and look for the video and watch it on your own time. So uh, w one thing I do want to note about the live sessions uh, is that in the, in the United States where we are based, uh, we have something called daylight savings time. Uh, this doesn't exist in all com countries, but basically we, the, the clocks are turned forward or back an hour um, uh, in the spring and then again in the fall. Uh, so this is, uh, I realize, actually going to happen in the, I believe, between the second and third weeks of our course. Um, so if you are in another country that does not have daylight savings time or if you go on daylight savings time uh, at a, on a different date than the United States does, that might shift the start time of the course. So just keep an eye out for our emails. We'll be sure to communicate clearly about that before it happens, uh, but be prepared for the live session starting either an hour earlier or an hour later for you um, as, the, as the course goes along. Sorry about that, but I, I don't really know any other way around it. Uh, just because different countries handle time differently. Uh, I want to, if, if anyone has had any difficulty in registering for the course, I want to just briefly review what is necessary. Uh, the important things are that you fill in the, uh, the, the form that gives us your email address and your Wikipedia username. Uh, and other vital information so that we're able to keep in touch with you by email, uh, and also that you register on Wikipedia. So let's let's go to. Uh, I'm I'm gonna put a uh, I'm gonna put a link to our course's homepage in the chat window. And for the moment, why don't uh, I'm I'm not gonna do screen sharing just yet. So uh, oh, I'm sorry, I just pasted the wrong link. Um, but how about everyone just uh, just click on this link for yourself, the second link that I just pasted in. Um, this is going to pull up our course homepage. And if you scroll down on this page, you should see your Wikipedia username. There's a long list of student names. Uh, if you want to find your username a little more quickly, you might do uh, Control F or Command F if you're on a Mac. Uh, so that you can do find within a page. So if you see your username here, you are registered as far as Wikipedia is concerned. If you do not see your Wikipedia username here, um, you will need to complete your registration process. So uh, rather than take more time and go through those details uh, at the moment, just if you have problems with it, just shoot me or Sarah an email. Uh, Sarah, let's just put our email addresses in the chat window now too. Um, oh, Chris, yes. I, so there is a there is a visual problem on this page that uh, I have not had a chance. We 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 haven't had a chance to troubleshoot. Uh, I think the 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 video over on the right hand side is the problem, and I just don't know what happened with that. Um, there's the play button is sort of to the right off the screen, uh, and Sarah noticed this and pointed it out yesterday. And this is just something that. 
uh, we haven't gotten to fixing. So my apologies for the ugly appearance of that. If you click on that play button that is over on the right hand side, you should still be able to play the video and, uh, and hopefully by the next time you look at this page, it's going to look a little cleaner. Um, I think this is, <laughs> I think uh, this, this is the sort of thing that, that, that happens on Wikipedia on occasion too. I think as you, as you see, as we're, we're going along, uh, Wikipedia is always a work in progress and sometimes you're going to run into things that aren't phrased right, don't look right, um, don't work right. And so, uh, we will try to present as clean an introduction to Wikipedia as possible, but sometimes things like this are going to happen. All right. Uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for asking, Chris. I'm, I wanted to address that, so I appreciate your bringing it up. So um, the, the tool that we're using now is called Blackboard Collaborate. And in, in general, we're going to be using the screen sharing feature fairly heavily. It does have a video feature where it's possible to, uh, to to watch people while they're ta while they're talking, but since we have often had students connecting with very low speed internet connections uh, from all over the world, and sometimes we have very large classes, we've generally chosen uh, not to use the video function just to keep the bandwidth use down. Um, so uh, the um, the 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 main way that we're going to use this software is. Uh, so that I can demonstrate things on the screen and you can follow along. And there, there are two modes to screen sharing. Uh, in one of them, I'll be able to pull up a page for you to, to see, but as I scroll through it and as I move my mouse around, you won't see that. It's going to essentially load the, the same page on your screen. And that's a very uh, responsive way of doing it. It doesn't take long for it to load on your screen after I load it and, and things like that. Um, but uh, but it doesn't allow you to see exactly what I'm doing. So other times I will be sharing my actual web browser, and you'll be able to see me moving my mouse around and clicking on things. Uh, and I'll I'll try to point it out which mode I'm using uh, so that it's not confusing. Okay, I think I'm falling a little bit behind on my schedule here. So let me just pause and look at my notes for a sec. Oh, okay. So uh, one video that we did put out, we linked to this in our most recent email, uh, and it's it's the video that uh, we were just looking at on the main page, is is a, an overview of how our uh, course pages work. Uh, and I do, even though I am behind, this is a pretty important thing uh, to cover briefly. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to touch on this, but if you have any confusion, just be sure to review that video. So I'm going to go into the screen sharing mode where um, where to load on your desktop. Um, so the the main thing I want to point out is the orange bordered box at the top of our main page on, on the top of really all of the pages associated with the course. Uh, the easiest way to get to any of our pages is going to be to go to Wikipedia and type WP colon wiki sue into the search bar. And that will pick, pull up the course description page. You won't find this very useful while you're taking the course. You, you already know everything probably that's on this page. Um, but it, will, it is an easy way to get to this box that has shortcuts to all the other pages. Uh, so the course homepage is the one that says February to April 2014. That's the, the central main page for our course, and uh, should always help you uh, get back on track if you're if you're confused. Uh, we'll be posting updates and things to that page as as the course goes along. Uh, then the next uh, set of links in that box uh, says class pages, and you'll see the numbers one through six. Those are for each each week we'll have a page. So right now, uh, number one is the important one, and that has notes related specifically to this class session. We don't yet have pages for the other class sessions, but they'll generally be posted a few days before the class. And finally, uh, the, the course talk page. You'll see 
a link that says WT colon open. And that's sort of a funny format. You'll, we're going to cover, you're, we're going to explain thing, that, that, that name will, will make more sense shortly. Um, but the important thing to know here is that this discussion page is actually shared with something known as a wiki project. Uh, it's, it's shared with a, a group of Wikipedia volunteers who are interested in improving articles about openness, so open education, open source software, open access publishing, things like that. Uh, and so it is our discussion page, but there will be other discussions going on as well. So the, the reason that we're using this in this round of the course is so that as you're learning about Wikipedia, you're also getting a sense of uh, other people that are on Wikipedia that aren't part of our course and, um, and how, uh, how people uh, talk about their work improving articles. So that ought to provide a nice smooth transition when the course is done, if you want to keep editing Wikipedia and uh, and get to know other people outside of the course. Okay. So now I think I am actually behind, so I am going to speed right speed right up here. Um, oh, we have we we do have two research projects affiliated with this course. You'll notice in the the homework for this week that's listed on that week one page. Uh, there are two optional assignments to fill in surveys. They're very short surveys, uh, so hopefully they won't take very much time. There's no requirement that you do, uh, but they, they will help us in, uh, in, in a couple of different research projects around uh, how to teach Wikipedia, how to, uh, how to engage with people in open education, what's useful, what people know. Uh, so it would be very much appreciated if you do fill those in. So I'd like to talk now a little bit about uh, what is Wikipedia, why is it, why do we think it's interesting and, uh, and worth having a deeper understanding of, and uh, also what is open educational resources, what is that movement, and how does, it, how does it connect? So Wikipedia actually derives from a concept uh, known as a wiki, and a wiki is just a kind of software. A wiki is a kind of website that is designed to remove as many many obstacles as possible to people collaborating, to make it very easy for anyone to edit a page without having to worry about things like creating an account and logging in and learning really complicated uh, coding like HTML and CSS. Um, and so this, this idea preceded Wikipedia by about five years. And, uh, and, and Wikipedia, of course, has, has taken this and, and has actually gotten rather complex. But many of these roots are very visible as you get to know Wikipedia. So uh, just to get a feel for that, I'd like to take a, take a short break. And, uh, and I'm going to introduce something called Etherpad, which is a tool that we'll be using in this class to, uh, to take notes together. And Etherpad is a is it, it, it's not literally a wiki, but it's very similar to a wiki. So this is going to give you a, a feel for um, for 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 what wikis are all about in terms of uh, building on one another's work. So if anyone's ever used Google Docs and shared them with other people, you might have used software that's very similar to this. The basic idea is it's just a just a a page where you can type in, and it's immediately what you type in is immediately visible. So this is even more live than a wiki. It doesn't even, you don't even have to click a save button before it's live. So I know many of us, many of you have already logged in and started adding to the page. I'm going to just uh, make sure we have the link here. Um, so this is, I'm pasting the link to our Etherpad page into the chat window. If you don't already have that open, why don't you click on it? And you're going to see a window that has, we, we have a, a box at the top. So the, the very top section uh, is really the only place uh, you probably shouldn't edit because you might confuse people if it's changing around too much. But under that, we can take notes during our classes. And uh, if, if links come up, if I mention links, or if, uh, if students or other instructors uh, have links to go to, uh, we can put them in an outline here, take notes. Uh, develop questions if you have a question and you want to sort of take a note and then add to it as the idea develops. This is a great tool for that. So I'm going to pause for about 
uh, two minutes and just let everyone play with this tool a little bit. Oh, and one more thing I want to point out before we do that. In the upper right corner, you're going to see a, um, there's a, there's a little sort of a, a, a person icon in silhouette, or it looks sort of like a chess piece. And if you click on that, you'll see uh, various different colors that represent what different people are typing in, and you can type your name. It'll, it, uh, at, the, at the very top, if you click in that window and type your name, then your name will be associated with that color, and other people will be able to see who's adding things. Pete, did you mean to be sharing your screen right now, or um, for people to go into their browsers? I did mean to share my screen, and I neglected to do that. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yes, I do want people to go into their own browsers to ed edit this. So uh, I will do the screen share, so in case anyone's really lost, they can see what I'm talking about. Sorry for not getting that up earlier. A lot of people have been diving in over there. It's, it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it now. So if you're if you're not sure what to do, uh, the the main thing is to put your name in the list of people participating today. That's a good first thing to try out. And then below that top section, it says "Let's take notes here." And so you can feel free to put any observations of something interested that that you learned or a question that you have. So I'm going to just step away from the microphone for about one minute, and I'll come back, and, uh, and then we can continue. Pete, we're looking at the outline with you. I'm sorry? We we can still see your screen, so we're looking at the outline with you. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> right. Um, I don't think we mind. Yep. Shouldn't be a problem. I just hope I didn't confuse anybody. Okay, so uh, I'm. Uh, if if anyone has any questions about Etherpad, uh, why don't you bring them up now, um, and it, we can take a moment on that if necessary. But otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna move along. This is something that we're gonna be using in all of our class sessions, uh, and in the future, we'll probably start off by uh, asking if there's someone who wants to be the main note taker for each session. It can be really helpful if one person is sort of keeping an eye on that throughout. Um, so you'll get more familiar with this tool as we go forward. Uh, I see a question in terms of setup. Do you use Etherpad so that all the writers get a color? It can be easily identified. So um, we, we, we generally just use Etherpad as a way to generate notes for the class and collect links and uh, interesting things that come up in the class. Uh, that are useful as a reference for students uh, in either if they miss the class and they want to catch up or in going back and, and finding ideas. So the way that we use it, it's not terribly important uh, to keep track of who did what, uh, but in different applications it, it would be. So next uh, I'd like to talk about the, the core values and principles of Wikipedia. Um, so the Wikipedia is a project that was, was, was founded on a very ambitious vision, uh, the idea that 
uh, that we could create something that allows all humanity to share all knowledge. Um, and so one of the things that has, that was that developed very early on and has been consistent throughout Wikipedia's existence uh, is what's known as the five pillars, the five core policies of Wikipedia. And uh, as Wikipedia has grown to include literally hundreds of thousands of contributors in hundreds of different languages uh, and to produce millions of articles, it's been really important to have these five pillars to refer back to because as you might imagine, uh, all kinds of arguments and disagreements develop or, uh, or people get confused about what other people are doing. And so it's actually more important than you might think to be able to refer back to these five pillars and say, okay, which, uh, you know, what, what is the, it, it's sort of like a constitution. Like what, if, if we have this dispute, what's the resolution that's going to keep us most on track with what we've agreed we're trying to do together. So I'm going to put the link to the five pillars in the shared screen. So this is the kind you're, you're not going to see me clicking around. Uh, but I'm going to just talk through these briefly. The first one is Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. Uh, you'd be surprised how useful it can be just to state that uh, explicitly because Wikipedia might seem to a lot of people to be a lot of different things. Sometimes it seems like it's trying to be a newspaper. Sometimes it seems like it's trying to be a dictionary. Um, you know, it, it, sometimes it, it, it seems like it might be a, uh, a listing service for businesses to, uh, to put out information to the public. And so having that core statement, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, is an important thing to bring it back in when it starts to feel scattered. Uh, the second one is Wikipedia is written from a neutral point of view. Uh, this is uh, this is a, a, a tremendously important part of what Wikipedia is, because as you, as you might imagine, if you take a, a topic that is very controversial, uh, two different people might write it in two very different ways. And so having this agreement that what we're trying to do is not resolve those disagreements, but present those disagreements so that the reader can understand what it is that people disagree about, that allows us to move past those disagreements sometimes. So um, we'll, we're going to see that as we move forward in the course. Um, we're, we're certainly going to encounter uh, controversial topics, and uh, we'll be sure to call that out and, uh, and look at what's happening as people work through those and come up with something that everyone can live with. The third, uh-oh, um, someone says audio is gone. Uh, I'm just seeing in the chat window. Are people able to hear me? I can hear you just fine, Pete. I think some some okay. people are having some audio problems, uh, and probably they're on wireless connections. And I've I've explained in, in chat that we are we're all sort of having different experiences of the audio, and that's normal. And um, most of us who spend a good amount of time on Collaborate try to find a wired connection if we can. And happily, they are. And, and also, will, if you if if anyone does lose audio and it just stays lost, uh, just be sure to come back and look for the video archive afterwards, and you'll be able to catch up later. Uh, so the third pillar is Wikipedia is free content that anyone can use, uh, edit, use, modify, and distribute. Uh, so it's, it's an important principle to Wikipedia, not just that it's available to read for free, but that, that you can take anything you read on Wikipedia and modify and, and republish it, not just on Wikipedia, but you can put it on your own website. You can print it in a book. You can print it out as a brochure to distribute in a class about, uh, you know, any topic that you like. Um, the two things, the two general things that you do have to do are provide attribution to the people who, who wrote it. Uh, and that's generally done just by a link to the the revision history of the article, which we'll see as we go forward. Uh, and also that you have to apply the same principle to whatever you republish. So you have to permit other people to republish your modifications as well. So the idea of this really is that we're not just building something that's useful in itself, but also building something that uh, can can grow and and morph and uh, meet that that vision of sharing knowledge around the world in ways that we might not even imagine today. 
Uh, number four is that uh, that Wikipedia editors should treat each other with respect and civility. So this is, uh, of course, related to the idea that uh, arguments will come up. It's just not a natural part of what Wikipedia is. And so it's really important to keep your cool as you're working on Wikipedia and um, and it can be it can be a real challenge sometimes, but uh, but it's it's really been I, I think one of the most distinct lessons of the last uh, 13 or 14 years of Wikipedia that this real rule really does make a difference, and that when people make the effort to assume good faith, assume that uh, that other people are generally trying to do something good and try to see that even through a disagreement, that usually good things result from that. Uh, and finally, number five is maybe a bit of a confusing one. It says Wikipedia does not have firm rules. So what we've been looking at here are general principles. And there are other parts of Wikipedia that are phrased in ways that they really sound like firm rules. And in 99% of the situations they're applied to, they might be treated very firm, as, as very firm. But Wikipedia fundamentally is experimental. Wikipedia, nobody knew uh, when they started Wikipedia, what it would turn out like when you know hundreds of thousands of people start start building it in their own directions, and we really like to see that as a strength, as one of the core core strengths of Wikipedia. And so it wouldn't make sense to say, okay, now we've figured it out. Now we've figured out exactly what the rules should be, and we can never change them again. So there might be there might be times when you see a rule that goes against something that you really know deep down is the right thing to do. And so you're encouraged when you encounter a situation like that to do what you really think is the right thing. And uh, and uh, if that means that we have to have a discussion about what the rules are, then we'll do that. So um, let me I just want to just look back at my notes for a second here. Okay, so I, I so uh, I want to I want to take another break for a, a quick activity. Um, I hope everyone is logged into Wikipedia. Uh, so if you, uh, I, I know you've you've pulled up the uh, the course homepage in your browser, but why don't you look in the upper right hand side of your own browser? And I'm going to just uh, I'm going to pull up. My browser again, so that I can point to what I'm talking about. Peter, do you want to share? Oh, you just started sharing. Never mind. Uh, yes, coming right up. Uh, so, at the top, in the upper right of your screen, the very top line of your web browser should start off with your username, and then it should say "Talk Sandbox Preferences," and then over at the right, "Log Out." So this is this is how you know whether you're logged in or not. So everybody, just take a moment to see if you're logged in and log in if you're not. Uh, and for most of you, if you haven't already put something on your user page, your uh, your username is going to be in red. Uh, and a, a red link on Wikipedia generally means that the page does not exist yet. So I want to just take a moment and give everyone a chance to put a sentence or two about themselves on your own user page. So this is not this isn't a, a Wikipedia article, but this is a way that your classmates and other people on Wikipedia, uh, when they when they encounter you on Wikipedia, can and they say, oh, I wonder who this person is. I wonder what they're up to. Um, they can learn something about you. This doesn't have to be. Uh, you don't have to share anything more than you want to. Some people put their real name. They put what their job is. They put who they work for. They put um, what their hobbies are. Other people might just say, you know, I'm a native English speaker and uh, you know, I live in the United States. Um, so that much is entirely up to you. But uh, I, th I think I'd, I'd like everyone to have the experience of making at least one Wikipedia edit before we get done with today's class session. So why don't you uh, why don't you why don't you click on that red link and see if you can figure out how to add something to your user page. I'm not going to give any more specific instruction to that right now because I think it's something you can all figure out. But if you don't, that's not a problem, and we'll we'll take questions uh, in about uh, I'd, I'd say about one minute. Uh, I'll be watching the the chat window and I'll, I'll answer in the chat window if I see anything. 
and it'll take about one minute to add a sentence to your user page. Peter, what do you suggest for people who have done this before and already have something on their user page? Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say, if you already have something, just, just take this time to review it and see if you want to add something to it. Um, and if you're perfectly happy with it the way it is, then just take a break. <laughs> now, some people may not have actually created their account because it would be possible for people to be attending this lecture without actually having registered formally for the class. Chances are, if you're attending this lecture, but you haven't gone through the process of creating your own account, then you you probably haven't registered for the class yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put in the registration link and you can on your own time catch up and register formally and that will walk you through creating an account. And this is something you could also work on during the um the homework um kind of open Q and A we do at the end of the formal lecture. Okay, so uh, let's let's move along. Uh, I'm. I hope that everyone was able to add something. Uh, I think we're we're. I'm running a little bit behind here, so if you've had trouble, uh, please just let us know. Uh, let's let's move that to the the lab session once we're done with this first hour, and we'll uh, we'll be sure to get you back on track. Uh, the the final things that I want to do uh, before the end of this first hour are I'd like to give you uh, an overview of a Wikipedia article and sort of and introduce you to the the structure of what a Wikipedia article can look like and some of the the different elements and I want to show you some of the main software features of Wikipedia. So uh, I'm going to pull up the article on open educational resources. Uh, and I'm going to pull the screen sharing back up. Okay, so so let's just have a look at a Wikipedia article and and what it what it might look like. I'm sure you have seen many Wikipedia articles before, but let's uh, let's let's take a look and see what we can learn about uh, about how an article is structured. The first the first section, and in this article it's a pretty short one, uh, is just two paragraphs. This is known as the lead section. So there's a, a principle in writing articles that the lead section ideally should summarize the entire article and should stand alone as if someone doesn't have time to read the whole article that they could read the lead section and get a, a general sense for the topic. If they don't know anything about it, they should come away from reading that lead section feeling that they have a general idea of what it's about. So this is one of a number of things that we'll see in this particular article. This is not a perfect article. There's room for improvement. Uh, but it does have, it's in, in some cases, you'll see just one very short sentence. So it's also not, uh, it's, it's not the worst article. It has, uh, it has gone some way along that path. After that lead section, you'll, you'll generally know the end of the lead section because you'll see the table of contents below it. It's not always the case. In a very short article, if, it, if an article doesn't have very many sections, you might not see a table of contents at all. Uh, but when it's longer, this, this will come up and you can click on, the, on any line in the table of contents to jump to that section. So if we scroll down, uh, actually, 
I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually jump to the end of the article and, uh, and show you the last three sections. See also references and external links, which are fairly standard across most articles, and then we'll come back and look at some of the actual, the, regu the, the specific sections of this article. So I'm going to click on see also and jump down near the bottom of the article. See also, this, this is, is, is bigger and longer than most see also sections are. Uh, but as you can see, these are, these are links to, well, these are links to other Wikipedia articles that are related to the topic and that are related in a general way. So usually a link should be within the text of the article. So uh, I'm just going back up to the beginning for a moment. Uh, where it says, in the very first sentence, this article says, open educational resources are freely accessible, openly licensed documents. And the words openly licensed are linked to the Wikipedia article about that. Um, so ideally, that's, that's generally considered the better way to link to something within Wikipedia. And it shouldn't generally be duplicated uh, in, the, in the see also section. If it, if it has a home in the text, it doesn't need to be repeated in the see also section. But sometimes you'll find that, that something is repeated. Uh, below that, you have the references section. And sometimes this is called footnotes. Sometimes it's called notes. But this is the place where we uh, help the reader see why something is stated in Wikipedia. It's, it's very important, especially for a collaborative project where anyone can contribute. Uh, regardless of their level of expertise, et cetera, it's, it's, it's very important to make it clear why something is thought to be true. So uh, every statement, especially if it's controversial or surprising, uh, should be sourced to a high-quality, um, well-established publication, um, like a, an academic journal or a newspaper or something like that. So you see these are, uh, most of these are links to external sites, uh, and they're also generally formatted in a bibli bibliographic style, uh, where even if someone isn't, if, if that website goes offline or if someone is reading a printed out version of this, they could still maybe go to a library and look up that publication. Uh, also, you'll, you'll find the, the little caret at the beginning of each line uh, will link you to the place in the text where that that reference is. So let's take number two here. Uh, this is a, an article by Claudia Sanchez. Let's click on that little upside down V at the beginning. And that's going to jump us right up to the top of the article. And you see that number two. Um, so it helps you to jump back and forth between the footnote and the, um, the text that it supports. If we go down uh, past the references section, we have external links. And so these are uh, similar to the see also section, which is other Wikipedia articles. These are links to uh, web pages outside of Wikipedia that are generally related to the topic. They're not necessarily used as references, but they're things that might be of general interest to someone uh, trying to learn about this subject. And then below that, we see a couple of what are known as navigation boxes. If we click show over on the right hand side, these drop down and they, they they show an organized collection similar to the see also section of, of things that are all uh, within one kind of category. Uh, and then bl below that, at the very bottom, we see categories. And so this is, uh, this is sort of like um, tags that you'll see on other websites. This is a, a way of browsing uh, Wikipedia articles that is, is kind of structured. So if we were to click on open content, we would see a bunch of different articles related to open content. And then we could um, maybe go up another level to open uh, or, uh, you know, and, and, and browse around in a, uh, in a hierarchical way. So these are, so navigation boxes and categories are two really useful ways to explore what's on Wikipedia. So I'm going to jump back up. I see I'm really running well behind here. Um, and you know, I th I think I'm I'm just going to make an adjustment on the fly here. I think it's I think it's important to hit all of these topics today. So uh, I had said that this first section was just going to be an hour. I think we're just going to go over. It'll probably be about an hour and ten minutes today, um, which might be a little bit 
awkward for uh, those following on their own time, but I think I think this is the better way to do it. We will send out a follow-up email for anyone who does have to go exactly on the hour, including any links and things that people need to need to know about. Uh, and I am seeing questions going by in the chat window, and I should say, in general, we we aimed at we in general we have more time to take questions during class. So I'm sorry if I'm ignoring your question right now. We have a lot to cover in this first session just to get everyone started, and um, and so hang on to your questions, ask them uh, on the like either on the talk page between now and next week, or in the lab session, uh, or you can also uh, you, you'll have plenty of time to bring them up in the lab session. Uh, plenty of time in future classes to bring them up as well. Okay, so uh, getting back to our article, uh, if we look at the first section, you can see there's a um, there's an image right away. There's a logo for Open Educational Resources and a caption. Um, something you might not know is if you click on an image on Wikipedia, it will usually take you to a higher resolution copy of that image. Um, so if you wanted to download that and republish it, it's generally going to be also available freely for reuse, like the text on Wikipedia. So let's say if you're uh, interested in a, a musical artist and you want a photo of them to put in a blog post or something like that, you, if you find it on Wikipedia, you can generally reuse it as long as you do um, credit the, the person who took the photo. Um, we covered references briefly, so we see that at the end of most sentences there are footnotes. So that's generally a sign of a, a article that's received a lot of care. Um, and we also talked about uh, internal links. So the, these these blue links that you see throughout the article, these are going to almost always be links to other Wikipedia articles. They should typically be links to other Wikipedia articles. It's technically possible to link within the text to uh, another website outside of Wikipedia, but um, for the most part, it's expected that that would be done as a footnote and not as a link within the article. Um, so I, I think this is enough to get a, a, a general sense of the structure of a Wikipedia article. And the final thing I want to get to today that's really going to give us a sense of how this all fits together and how it's possible for so many different people around the world to all work together and for it actually to result in something uh, that makes sense, uh, is I want to I show you the basic software features of how Wikipedia works. So I'm going to just basically, I'm going to show you these, the tabs across the top of each article. So where it says article and then talk, read, edit, view history, because these are really the core features of a Wikipedia, of, the, of how the Wikipedia software works. So everything we've been looking at is the article. Um, or within our course pages, it has the same structure. I'm going to just put in the general description for our course. And where it says article, it's, this is actually going to change, and it says project page, because this is not a Wikipedia article about something. This is uh, something that is uh, supportive of the practice of building Wikipedia. So it's called a project page, but it still has um, this upper left tab lit. Uh, if we if we click on my username, that upper left tab is going to say user page. But whatever we're looking at, it's going to have this basic structure where that page then has its own talk link, its own edit link, and its own view history link. So getting back to this, the article, let's say that I was reading the article about open educational resources and I have a comment about it. Let's say it didn't have any section about history. And I thought, well, it's, there's a really important history to the Open Educational Resources Movement. Shouldn't we add a section like that? If I want to make a major change like that, I might want to tell other people who are interested in the article. And the way I would go about doing that is click on the talk page. And then there's this tab that appears when you're on a talk page that says New Section. And I would click on that. I'd be able to type in a heading and what my question or my comment is and save that on the page. It's going to go to the, the very bottom of the page. So if you want to see the most recent discussion on any talk page, you generally want to scroll to the bottom. Uh, and we can see here the, the very last section is called Develop This Article Friday 19th of September 2013, when someone 
uh, pointed out that a number of people were working on this particular article at a conference. Uh, the talk page is also used to kind of collect some information about an article. So when you see tan boxes like this at the top, uh, those will give you a lot of information about who built the article and how they went about it. Uh, we're going to get into wiki projects uh, in, the, in the next session. Wiki projects basically are uh, informal collections of Wikipedia volunteers who are interested in a topic. So wiki project education has basically asserted that they're interested in this article, and so has Wiki Project Open. Um, so that will be listed here, and if you click on the show link, you get a little more information about that Wiki Project. Um, and then down here it also says this article is the subject of an educational assignment. Um, so this is uh, a little note that might help someone looking at the article understand where it came from. So. Um, these are. I'm, I'm just going to touch on these briefly. We're going to come back in much more detail to these things throughout the course. The next tab I want to show you is the Edit tab, but before I do that, I want to go back to the article. So I'm going to click my Back button, We're looking at the article about Open Educational Resources. And if I click on Edit, this is going to show me a whole bunch of code that creates that Wikipedia page. Uh, the code is uh, can be a little daunting to look at. But most of it, if you, uh, if you just take a moment uh, to study it, you'll figure out what's going on. So if we look at the article, it starts off with the words open educational resources in bold, the bold faced, and then it says are freely accessible, and then there's a link to openly licensed. So if we go to the edit screen, we're going to see how that stuff came, uh, came to be. Open educational resources is surrounded by three uh, apostrophes. And so that's what turns it into bold. Uh, openly licensed, this is surrounded by double square brackets. And, uh, and we, have, uh, we have one phrase in it, which is the page that it links to, and the other phrase is the text that displays in here. So this is, this is basically how uh, the code of a wiki works to produce uh, things like links and, uh, and formatting. Again, we're going to get into much more of this later. We're also going to be looking at a mode where you don't have to look at the code. It's really worthwhile to understand, at least on a basic level, how the code works, even though there is a more visual way of doing it now. Because the, the, the more visual, like what you see is what you get, editing mode is not perfect. And you'll probably run into times when you need to get in and mess around with the code. So that's one of the things that we're going to be covering throughout the course. Uh, and then the the next tab over is called View History. And this one is, uh, this is also going to probably look a little bit confusing at first glance, but it gives you a ton of information about how the, how the article has developed. What we see here is basically each line refers to one revision of the article. So the most recent revision is at the top. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go across and show you what, the, what, what each one of these links and annotations within the line means, and we're going to get a sense of how people work together. So let's start with the date, and I'll, I'm going to come back to the stuff that's to the left of it. So on this one, we, we see the time and date is a link. So that's the time and date that the edit was made, but also if you click on that, it's going to take you to that revision of the article. So nothing is ever really lost on Wikipedia. Uh, if we come back to an article expecting to find something and we know we saw it on December 19th but it's not there anymore, you just go in and you click on the version from December 19th and you can probably find it. The next link shows the name of the user who made that most recent edit. So this person's username is Monkbot. Uh, and then you have a link to their talk page. So we, we saw talk pages before where you can have a discussion about an article. Also every user has their own talk page. So if we wanted to leave a note specifically to this person, hey, this, uh, this edit is confusing to me. I don't understand why you did X, Y, and Z. We might choose to leave that on the talk page about the article, or we might choose to leave that on the person's talk page, depending on uh, whether we're more interested that that person see it or that other people working on the article see it. 
so that's what the talk link is. And then to the right of that is contribs, which is short for contributions. This is going to take us to a screen that looks kind of similar to what we're looking at right now, but shows all of MonkBot's edits to a variety of different articles. So if we're interested, what has MonkBot been working on? Uh, we would click on contribs and see see a whole list of, of articles in a format that looks very much like this view history uh, screen. Uh, next, we see a bold-faced M. If we look in the key, that tells us it's a minor edit. I'm not going to get into that right now. It's not really all that important whether something is marked as a minor edit or not. The next couple tell us something about the length of the article. So for our for our purposes in the English language and the Latin uh, uh, Latin character set, the Latin alphabet, uh, a byte is more or less one letter or one character. So this is telling us that there are 43,000 letters in the article at that at this point. And then after that, it tells us that 10 letters or about maybe one word or two words were removed. It says minus 10. So that change removed a total of 10 characters. He might have added 30 and deleted 20, or added 30 and deleted 40. So the net result is that 10 were removed. Uh, so it's just a, a, it, it, it's a, it's a quick view. It doesn't necessarily tell you a lot of information. But sometimes as you're scanning through, you'll see that someone added you know, 8,000 characters in one edit, and that might be useful to you as you're scanning through this to see where the significant change was made. Uh, if it's red, that means characters were removed. If it's green, that means they were added. And the larger numbers will often be bold-faced. You can see this one down here added 1,195 characters. So it's in bold, so it draws your attention to that one big edit. Finally, there is, uh, there, there's some descriptive text and this is this is reflecting what was edit, entered into the edit summary field when the person made that edit we're going to see this as we as we do edits but every time you make a change to a wikipedia article right near the save button there's a place that says edit summary and the idea is that you would describe what you've done it's a really good idea to get into the habit from the very beginning of always entering something as an edit summary you could say i fixed the typo you could say uh, adding a citation uh, for a controversial fact. Uh, sometimes people, it might be a couple of sentences. Usually people are very brief in these. But as you can see from this view, it's really useful to have some of it, uh, to have something there, because other people might look at that history and they want to scan through and get a quick sense who's trying to do what. So this is a concept that we're going to return to uh, many times throughout the course. Finally, uh, I want to get back to the left-hand column that I initially skipped over. So now we know what the line is about, but what if we want to compare different lines? That's what all of these links are on the left. So if we click any two of the buttons, let's say I click this button from the 22nd of December, and then I click uh, this other button for the 22nd of December, and now I click Compare Selected Revisions, this is going to show us what happened between these two lines. What what did these two edits accomplish? Uh, I haven't looked ahead to see what I'm going to see here, so hopefully this is a useful example. Looks like it is. So this shows us on the left-hand side. The, le the left-hand column is the older of those two edits, and the right-hand side is the newer. And then it's going to highlight anything that was removed on the left and anything that was added on the right. So this person removed the phrase over 400 students. They removed the word courses. And they added in courses which are based solely on OER. So, And you can see a number of different edits were made in here. Uh, so this will, this will allow you to really see, like sometimes if you go to an article and you see that there's a sentence that was removed and you think it was an important one, well, you might see that five different people have edited the article since that since you know that sentence was in there. And you want to narrow down who removed it so that you can, so you know who to bring it up to. So this kind of view is, is going to be really helpful in that narrowing down process. The ones on the very left are just kind of shortcuts to common versions of that. So prev is short for previous. So for any line, if you click on prev, it's just the same as clicking that button and the button on the line below it. So if we wanted to see what Ivan Shmakov's uh, most recent edit was, we could either 
click on this button and the button below it and do compare selected revisions, or we could click Prev right here. So Prev is just a shortcut for this configuration of the buttons. Uh, and Cur is short for current, so that's going to compare whatever line you click it on to the current revision of the article. So that's the, uh, that's the edit history screen. Um, and you're going to find, I, I mentioned before, if we click on contribs, we're going to see a, a similar view for user contributions. So this uh, Ivan's user contributions, this looks kind of similar to the edit history, except it's showing a bunch of different articles that this person has worked on instead of a bunch of different people working on the same article. Uh, also, there's, there's, there's another kind of screen that's similar, which is recent edits. So if we, if we look on the left-hand uh, side of any Wikipedia page, you will see this link, Recent Changes. Recent Changes shows the very most recent edits to Wikipedia. And especially for the English language Wikipedia, this is a really rapidly changing uh, list. If we click it again, we're going to immediately see a whole different list of articles because there are people constantly editing Wikipedia. It's uh, you know, many, many, many edits every second. Um, but if you want to narrow that down, you might want to build something called a watch list. So I already have a watch list, and this, this is my demo account. Um, so I have a few articles that I have decided that I'm interested in. The way you, the way you uh, decide that is that's the star when we're looking at an article, so I'm going to go back to this Open Educational Resources article. See on the right-hand side, there's this white star. If I click on it, it's going to turn blue, and I get this little message that says this page has been added to your watch list. Uh, what this does it, is it enables me to see sort of a customized version of recent changes about just the things that I'm interested in. So I'm going to click on watch list, and we'll see yet another screen that is of this now kind of familiar format that shows changes to articles that I'm interested in. So uh, one of the important things to do as you're getting started with Wikipedia is to start putting some things in your watch list. In this, in this course, the most important things to start by putting on your watch list are, uh, are uh, the, the different pages associated with our course. So let's go to wp colon wiki this is our, our general description of the course. And each one of you will probably want to add that to your watch list by clicking the star. You also might want to go to uh, the, the course homepage and add that to your watch list. So we're going to take a moment uh, and, and add these uh, in just a moment. Actually, the, uh, so this is the course homepage is a strange page on Wikipedia, um, and it doesn't work the same way as a lot of, as, as almost all other pages do. So you actually won't be able to add this specific page to your watch list. Uh, but the class pages one, two, three, four, five, six, you can, and even the ones that don't exist yet, you can add those to your watch list. So I'm going to click on two, and we're going to get a page that says Wikipedia does not have a project page with this exact title. This page doesn't exist yet, but you still see that star up there. So we can click on that and basically say when this page does get created and changes start to get made, I want that to show up in my watch list too. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to give you all about five minutes to go and add a few pages to your watch list. Um, I suggest that you add at least these ones, but also uh, if you have some thoughts about what kinds of articles you might want to edit on Wikipedia during the class, you might add those as well. Um, hopefully some related to open education, so something you might want to add is the article on open education uh, or open educational resources. So you, just, you can just type in the titles of some articles, the article will come up and you can click on that star. And then to test it, You'll want to click on the word watch list in the upper right and make sure that you're starting to see some changes. So let's take uh, about five minutes for that, and then I'm going to come back and I'll ask some of you to uh, let us know what you found. Um, 
And that is going to conclude our presentation for this week. So uh, what we will what we'll have actually the 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 one one last thing that I'll do before we're done is I'm going to review our week one page that covers the the homework for the course. So I'll go over the various things that you can or should do for next week. Some are optional and some are an important component of the course. Uh, and then I will give you all some time to get into that work, and Sarah and Bob and I will be on hand if you have questions. So we'll be able to continue in an informal way. So let me, I'm just going to check our chat window before I step away. Uh, so Chris, excellent, excellent question. Thank you. Um, can one see a list of users that have added a certain page to their watch list? The answer is no, and that is because Wikipedia considers that private information. Uh, the same, it's, it's the same principle as uh, if you go to a library, um, you might not consider it anyone's business what books you checked out. Um, so when you add Wikipedia pages to your watch list, that is not that that is that's one of the, the few things that you do on Wikipedia that is not going to be visible to everyone else. Um, and you can you can count on that being kept private. There are ways to see how many people have watched this as a certain article. So uh, if there are, I think there's a threshold of maybe about 30 watchers. That there, we will find that there are ways to see if an article has 30 watchers or 300 watchers. Um, but you won't be able to see who those particular people are. Uh, any other? Uh, burning questions that have accumulated before you guys get started? Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Neil. I see we have a, a few people stepping away. Um, I, uh, I would strongly encourage you uh, to come back and, uh, and see the homework intro, which I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step away now. I'm going to come back in about five minutes and go through that. But uh, if you get lost at all in your homework, uh, there will be a little bit more in the video. So uh, I'll see most of you in about five minutes and the rest of you next week. Thanks, everybody. And if you are taking off now, you're going to miss some uh, good opportunities to pick Pete's incredible brain about Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, but uh, work your way through the page one homework. Um, offline if you have to, and um, in that case, we will see you next week. Otherwise, see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I don't know why this. I'm I'm having trouble starting the screen sharing again. I can give it a whirl if you want to talk me through what you're gonna do. Oh, I just saw your. Oh, I a second. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. So we are going to look at the week one page and. So you've probably already seen this general description, Wikipedia under the hood, which will tell you what we have covered in class today. Uh, and then also we've got the, the outline for the first class that uh, <laughs> gives us that, that, that first hour, or as, it, as the case may be, hour and a half. But below that is the homework section. And you'll see that there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, the main thing is don't, don't be intimidated by this. We've put lots of things in here that will be appealing or interesting to uh, students of different backgrounds, uh, but we've, we've tried to be clear about what it's important that you do. The do this section at the top, this is really the main thing that you should be focused on. Uh, and then below that we have read this and watch this. So those will, will be um, online readings and videos that will uh, support your learning, but in some cases, 
They're going to cover topics that you already know or that you're not particularly interested in. So feel free to skip over things that are not interesting in this section. Um, sometimes you'll you'll find uh, that one link leads to another. This is really meant more as a, a sort of a general guide to point you towards interesting things than a, uh, a requirement that you would cover all of it. Um, in the in the uh, in the first week, it's probably where it's it's most important to do some reading and watching. Uh, I do want to point out the the first line of the uh, the read this section, the editing Wikipedia brochure. This is a brochure that's designed to be printed out, and it it covers a lot of the material that I did in this first class um, about the generally how Wikipedia fits together. So I would really strongly urge you to print that out if you have a printer. Um, and you might just want to have that on hand throughout the course. Uh, and then there, there are also some, uh, some, some general guidelines on editing Wikipedia. And then these, the, the chapters from this book, which is freely available in PDF format, as you see in the, in the first line, these chapters will go more into the, the philosophical background of Wikipedia, uh, where it came from, why it exists. Uh, and uh, and what its what its values are. So I would really urge you to download that and uh, and take a look through it. These are the chapters that I think will be the most rele relevant. Uh, and then we also have um, the 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 very last line, the basic guide to open educational resources, uh, covers the other aspect of our course, uh, open educational resources generally. So Wikipedia is one open educational resource, but there are many that are, uh, there, there are great, there's a great variety of open educational resources. There are formal textbooks that are used in classes in universities and high schools. Um, you know, uh, there, there are videos that can be remixed and uh, translated. Um, so uh, if you don't know anything about open educational resources, you'll probably want to take a look through that book, which is a, a very nice introduction to the topic, and uh, it's pretty accessible. Uh, going back up to the do this section, uh, some of these will be very familiar by now, like review the, the class notes. That's uh, So we, we all saw the Etherpad, uh, but it looks like especially this time we had lots of stuff added to the, the Etherpad. Uh, I see just pages and pages of notes. So you might find that it's useful to go and review those. Um, also, we, we did create a basic user page as part of the exercise in class here, but you might want to go back and, uh, and flesh out your user page a bit. So there are some resources on what you might want to think about there as well. And uh, also, we, we very strongly encourage you to start working on some articles. Find an article that maybe needs some typos fixed, or uh, maybe there's a sentence that reads a little awkwardly, and you can make it read a little more smoothly. So just Try to roll up your sleeves and and uh, take on some small edits on Wikipedia. We'll be doing more substantial things as the course goes along, but it's it's great to get started early so you can get a feel for it. So this homework section you're going to find on each one of the week pages as we come up to it. Um, so generally, like ahead of class, you're always going to see you're going to want to look at the the general description of the class and the outline, and then after the class is over and when you're preparing for the next one, that's when you're going to want to look at that homework section. So uh, do we have any questions about the general structure of the, the course pages or really any general questions at all? We ha I'm at the end of the presentation uh, that I wanted to give today, and uh, I'd be happy to take some general questions, uh, and hopefully we can move those kind of quickly, and I'll get started on the homework. I'm just going to jump in here. Um, a couple of people have pointed out that the link to the Editing Wikipedia brochure was actually a link to the uh, picture of the cover. I'm just going to find the correct link and paste it in there. So if people want to ask other questions, I'll provide that link separately. OK, that's uh, my mistake then. Sorry about that. I just put that in a couple hours ago. So uh, Can you read some questions that have come up. 
I'm sorry? Yeah, I see, I see has been coming up. Giso has a, has a question. Is it, I don't know if it's Giso or Giso. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm mangling your name. Uh, asking about translations. So um, the different language editions of Wikipedia, there are uh, almost 300 different language editions of Wikipedia. Guizo, okay. Um, so each one of them is an independent publication and an independent community. There's lots of crossover. There are Wikipedia volunteers who speak multiple languages, so they might work on multiple different Wiki Wikipedias. Um, but they, if there's an article about, say, open educational resources, it might be a very different article in the English Wikipedia and the French Wikipedia and the German Wikipedia, and it might not exist in the Portuguese Wikipedia. Um, so uh, it is, uh, it, it, it can be a very good idea to translate an article that doesn't exist in one Wikipedia from another one, uh, but also each, each community has their own variants on those policies and rules that we looked at. So sometimes, for instance, uh, the Spanish Wikipedia is not as particular about citations as the English Wikipedia, so it's, it's pretty common to find an article on Spanish Wikipedia that only has one or two references, where the English language one has, you know, 50. Um, so translation is a really interesting area of Wikipedia, and it's it's definitely one that we would love to touch on in this course, uh, but we probably won't get too deep into it. Uh, but I, th I think uh, uh, as we as we start moving towards the the uh, main project, for the, the final project for the course. So in, in week three, we're going to assign a, a project. Everyone's going to choose an article that they work on for the remainder of the course. And if you're particularly interested in translation, you might choose an article where you're going to either translate it from one language to another or um, work on the articles in both languages and pull the good bits from one over to the other. Does that address your question, Buito? Oh, okay. So it sounds like you might have a, a good opportunity to to do some of that. Peter, I have a couple questions coming in to me privately, which I can read off to you. Okay. Go right ahead. Um, some people have noticed they're seeing slightly different things than what you're showing. For example, instead of seeing a star, they're seeing something that says watch. A couple, a couple uh, of yes. differences. Yes. Uh, so I suspect that people who are seeing that probably created their account a while ago. Um, I, I may be wrong about that, but um, there are different there are different views of Wikipedia. Uh, there are different there are different uh, sort of themes, uh, and it's evolved over time. And in some cases, when you like, if you signed up for your account in 2010, uh, and then the default theme was a, a new default theme was released in 2011, the one that you had in 2010 will remain unless you go and explicitly choose the new one. So some of those changes, like uh, changing the word "watch" to the star. Uh, might not have gotten implemented on people's pages. Um, so those are those are changes that you can make in your user preferences. Uh, we we will probably want to really take a look at the there there are lots and lots of options in the preferences, and we'll be taking a look at that uh, several times throughout the course. But you might want to get started by going in and looking at the um, the appearance section and playing with some of the options in there. Can you do you want to just show us briefly how that works? Um, so yes. If people don't know where to where to go to tweak that kind yep. of thing. Yeah. So let's see. All right. So uh, again, in the upper right hand bar, the link pretty much right in the middle says preferences. And if you click on that, you'll get a number of tabs. 
uh, under where it says preferences, two lines under where it says preferences, you see user profile, appearance, date and time, etc. Uh, some of these tabs are really extensive. So gadgets, for instance, is a, a really useful one. Gadgets is actually a place where uh, individual Wikipedians can develop features that they make available to each other. So this is kind of one of the more creative areas. You click on gadgets, you'll see dozens and dozens of different checkboxes that describe different things. Uh, you know, different changes that you can make. But um, probably the, the, the most important basic ones are your, uh, your user profile. So this contains mostly information that you entered when you signed up for your account, uh, basic, uh, basic information about your account. Um, if you want to change the way that your signature appears, that's where you would do it. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Um, so when I, my account name here is Pete Forsyth Demo. This is my demo account that I use for, for classes. And maybe I don't want my signature to appear that way when I leave a message on a talk page, so I might put in Pete. Uh, anytime you make a change in your preferences, you have to remember to scroll down to the bottom and click Save, or it's not going to, uh, it's not actually going to take effect. Uh, but then for this specific question about things like the watch list, uh, like w whether watching an article shows up as a star or text, I'm pretty sure, well, that might be in the appearance tab. It also might be in the watch list tab. I don't remember. But the appearance tab is generally going to cover how the software looks. I'm not seeing that in here, although it might be it might be the skin. So the skin is sort of the general look of how Wikipedia appears to you. I'm going to click on the preview for, I think Cologne Blue is one of the more dramatically different ones. So let's just get a quick look at that. So this is the same, this is the front page of Wikipedia, but in a very different skin than we're used to seeing it in. So that might be the difference. Maybe if you, if you have uh, Monobook selected as your skin, which used to be the default before vector, that might be why watch is showing up as a word instead of a star. Uh, but it also might be in this watch list tab. Maybe one of these check boxes says whether it's a word or not. Uh, I'm going to look for other questions there. This is, we could look, we could spend you know, a week going through every feature in the preferences screen. So I'm not going to go too much further in that direction just now, but uh, let's see what other questions have come up. Uh, I did see someone asked a little while ago how I left a message for all of the students. Um, and the short answer is yes, that, that is something that you have to have a, um, a special, you have to have been sort of approved to use that tool. As you can imagine, it's something you could really easily use to, you know, spam people with advertisements for your company or, you know, something completely unrelated to what Wikipedia is supposed to be for. So um, it's, not a, it's not a feature that just anyone can do. Uh, and I think, let's, let's come back to that later in the class if that's something you're, uh, you're still interested in because it's, it, it's, it's not a quick demonstration. But here, I'll actually, I'll put in the, um, name of the, if, if you want to look it up yourself, it's called Auto Wiki Browser, and it's actually a program that runs on Windows uh, that logs into Wiki and, um, and allows you to make a number of similar edits. Oh, okay, so thanks, Jade, for, uh, for bringing up that question and, the, and Liang. Um, yes, so the visual editor, so th this is, uh, you, you do have to go into your preferences to enable that. This is the, the feature that allows you to skip looking at the wiki code and just um, type what you see is what you get, more like a word processor. Uh, and I'm going to say during the, the first couple of class sessions, I think it's better that you do not use the visual editor so that, so that you can get a general sense of what's going on behind the scenes on Wikipedia, what the, how the wiki code works. Um, when we get to the point of choosing our final projects and really getting into the, uh, or, you know, writing articles and researching articles, you might find that you want to use the visual editor and it's fine to switch over then. But I would say during these first two class sessions, uh, probably better to just stick with the basic edit screen. Thank you, 
people are also um, asking about how to um, search for stuff, like if you if they want help guidance on the like Wikipedia guidelines on how to add pronunciation to a page. Do they um, use the Wikipedia search box? Is there some secret to pulling up the, the help files? Okay, so um, the there are a lot of different ways to learn about different features of Wikipedia. The help screen is probably the best general reference. So in the left-hand navigation under interaction, you'll see this link for help. And if you click on that, you can there's a there's a search bar that's specific to the help screen. So you might put pronunciation in there. And I'll bet that'll come up with a guide on how to deal with pronunciation guides. Um, yeah, actually several several different links there. So uh if you have specific questions I, I would say that help is the best place to start. Um, the other place specific to our course is you can always, uh, so if you go to our course talk page, WP, WT for Wikipedia talk, colon open, um, and click new section to leave a question, this will be the main place that you can ask a question of us, your instructors, and your fellow students. Um, so, and it's going to be, uh, we'll, we'll have students going, uh, both, both of these are important approaches to take. So if you're, if you're trying to do something that's really specific, like pronunciation might be an example of something that you're really interested in working on, but, um, you know, maybe most of the other students might not be. So you might go off and, and try to learn about that on your own uh, and not, uh, not so much go into the details of that on our talk page, but you're always welcome to ask about it on your talk page. So if you're not finding the help that you need elsewhere on Wikipedia, um, this is that's where you should post uh, a question here, and we'll either we'll either answer it for you or we'll point you in the right direction. Indeed, if you scroll up, yeah, I was going to say uh, people can just click on the new section and it kind of directs you to a place where all you really have to do is just write regular text. You don't really have to be right. able to edit um, a wiki to, be, to ask a question. Yes, very very good point. Thank you. Um, so yeah, when you're on a talk page, especially especially for our own talk page, just clicking on that new section, it's going to be look a lot like when you created your, uh, your user page earlier. It's just a big blank window. You can put in a headline, uh, you know, question about pronunciation. And then type your question in here. And the one one thing that you might not uh, notice that's important to remember is uh, after you type your question in, you should always sign it. And there's a little bit of code. The important part is these four squiggly marks that will create a signature and a timestamp when you ask a question. So you don't have to remember that code. You can use the toolbar and just click on this this pencil that looks like someone signing their na their name and that'll put it in there for you but then when you scroll down and save the page i'm not going to actually save it but i'll click show preview it will turn that into your username that that selection there but it'll turn it into your username with a link to your user page and to your user talk page and the date and time that you left your question. Did you also already cover what it what it means when a a name or a page is in red? Because I was asked that question. Uh, I think I may have missed that. I I meant to. So a red link on Wikipedia means that the article or the page does not exist yet. So the probably the most straightforward example of that is in our WikiSue course pages. Uh, we have, uh, you'll see that the first link for the week one session is blue and the other ones are red. So these red links, that, that indicates 
that the page doesn't exist yet. If you click on one, and this is actually by design that it's a link because it's encouraging. If it's a Wikipedia article, in the early days, this was the way that this was one of the main ways that people were encouraged to start a new article. So, um, I guess in this case, our course pages aren't a good example because we'll be the ones creating the <laughs> the course pages. But if you imagine that this was a, a link that said dog and there was not yet a Wikipedia article about dogs, you would click on it and you would immediately have the opportunity to start that article. You have this big edit window and you type in what you have to say and you click on save page. And so and and let me let me one one bit of follow up too because we just uh because everybody uh in the class just did a basic start to their user page. Uh, remember that not everyone who's enrolled showed up today, but if we scroll down to the bottom of our course homepage, it has a list of all the students, and you see that many of our students now have blue links, which means that they now have a user page. Uh, so let's click on one of those. I happen to know who David Boudreau is. Hi, David. Uh, and so if we click on that, we'll actually see his introduction himself. And it's being very slow. So the way while it's loading, the way the way it came up was when we were looking at uh, one of the history pages, and a number of users were blue. They're, you know, we were looking at who had edited the page and when, and the timestamp, and the user's name, and what, how many changes there had been. And occasionally, there would be a user whose name was red, um, and. Uh, to a more experienced Wikipedian, that's kind of a flag that it's a less it's it's likely a less experienced user who's doing the editing because at least in my experience, and Peter can correct me if I'm wrong, but typically typically once once people have started spending some time on Wikipedia, they do fill in some information on their own user page. And so as people go forward and start to establish an identity on Wikipedia, they they do tend to identify who they are, or at least something about what articles they work on. So when you do see a user who's in red, um, it, uh, it it does sort of jump out of a like a history page, for example, if you're curious about who has been working on an article. Very good point. So uh, I. I'm going to need to step away for a little bit here. Um, so I, I'm going to encourage all of you to uh, to keep poking around on Wikipedia and exploring the features we've looked at. Add some articles to your watch list. Uh, find some articles where maybe you have some simple edits that you can try out. Uh, don't don't worry about breaking things on Wikipedia as we as we see uh, old revisions of an article get kept. So you can always you can click on the, the preview button and see what it's going to look like, or you can click the save button. And if you really mess something up, someone will probably just fix it. Um, so uh, please just continue if you have the time, and feel free to put questions in the chat window. I'm going to be back in about 15 minutes and, and look at what questions have come up. Uh, I see people are still, uh, some people are dropping off, which is fine, and we'll just see you next week. I will hang around here while Pete's gone. Uh, as as those who have taken the course before.